Are there any children in the house? <laughs> okay, hi. I'm standing here in front of you, and there's someone else I'd like you to meet today. It's a very special lady. It's my little niece, Robin. I told Robin that I'd take her along with me to a room full of people <laughs> by talking about her. When I said that, she came and sat on my lap with a big, I can just see that happening smile. And then she said, then tell the people, Robin is a little girl, she's only seven years old, she's still a child. So here she is. Two days before Robin's seventh birthday, I bought her an enormous teddy bear. It was bigger than herself. I saw the, set off for the train station, carrying a huge bear. And at first, I held on to him in a practical way, with his head facing the ground. But after many smiles from passers-by, and one man at the station platform saying to me, yeah, everyone needs a hug now and then, the bear came to life. On the train, I gave him his own seat. But as the carriage filled up, I put him on my lap. And I could hardly see around him, but the bear was having entirely his own social life. <laughs> Looks of amazement, happy glances, little chats, selfies, of course. <laughs> it was a very funny and heartwarming journey. For me, totally unexpected. The next day, Bear and I went on to Terschelling, an island in the Wadden Sea, taking the bear with us, with me. And that's where I was going to surprise Robin. Bear in the car, Bear on the bus, Bear on the bike, and then Bear on the boat. <laughs> that's us. He's really big. On the upper deck, I settled down on one of those long white benches, and I put the bear on my left. Beside him was just enough space left for one lucky person to sit. But once we were sitting, I had second thoughts. Enough people would find it antisocial that bear and I were taking up so much space, just for the fun of it. I looked at Bear sideways. Hey, Bear. And my first instinct won. That empty spot was for a lucky person. And that person arrived. A family sat down on the bench opposite us, and the father was keen to sit beside Bear. Oh, does he always grin like that? Again, friendly comments and cheerful moments. Wow, you could travel all over the world with a bear like that. I also noticed the man sitting by himself. He had a weather-beaten face. It made him stand out. He was so unlike the others. And I thought to myself, this must be a real islander. Someone who has his own view of mainlanders and of beer. <laughs> When we arrived and everyone was moving toward the exit, this guy came up to me. Is he um, coming to live with us on the island? Yeah. And then he surprised me by asking, what's his name? <laughs> Bear. <laughs> on the return trip, I was up on the deck again, without Bear. Bear stayed on the island with a very happy Robin. How different it felt. No smiles. No chats with people. Everyone sat there, busy with themselves or each other. Me too. A week later, I was telling a friend about the trip with Bear. And I heard myself saying, 
that bear brought so much joy and connection. And my friend replied, it touched your inner child. And hey, you can do that without a bear. How close this came to my deepest desire to connect with this energy, with my inner child, with my imagination, playfulness, joy. Yeah. And when I was with the bear, the connection was there. When I'm with children, the connection is there. And even in the world of big people, the connection can be there. But how well I know it, the feeling when it's not there. Especially when I want to do what I love so much, writing stories. How well I know it when I choke. As soon as I'm in a situation when things get serious, things get heavy, with pressure to perform well, and all those other big people things, then I choke. When I was preparing this story, I heard a voice in my mind saying, what's so good about having fantasy? No one takes you seriously for it in the adult world. This was my shadow speaking. And I felt a tremendous resistance to it. No inner darkness. I don't want any shadow in my story. I want to touch the hearts with joy. When I next met Robin, I was still confused. And she asked me, what's your story about? Well, it's about how big people can act and feel like children. Big people were once children themselves. And when you grow up, you take it with you inside yourself. Oh, she said. No matter how old you are, you always be a child inside. Later that day, I asked her, how can you see the child inside a big person? Well, when big people make mistakes, just like children do. This reply startled me. I naturally thought of the inner child in terms of having fun, being crazy, full of fantasy, but making mistakes? Next morning, I woke early with a great pressure on my chest. Will I be able to tell a story that touched, will touch the inner child in people, in myself? And suddenly, I realized how wonderful Roman's answer was. Making mistakes. From a child's perspective, it's just part of the process of being a child. Children do things for the first time, children learn, children make mistakes. From my perspective, I only saw the positive things when you're in touch with your inner child. The fun, the fantasy. But can I, a big person, let myself make mistakes? I looked into the shadow. And instead of a huge, dark monster, I saw that I pushed a child into the shade. A little girl who makes mistakes who still doesn't know how to do things, who wants so much to do well, hidden in the shadow. A little me. And she asked me with her eyes, do I get in your way? I 
I want to tell a story that makes people happy, I said to Robin later on. Do you have any tips for me? Then you say, close your eyes. So please, everyone, close your eyes. You're on top of a hill, surrounded by trees, and the colors of the leaves are yellow, orange, and shiny red. The sun is shining. There's silence. A beautiful silence. If you want, you can open your eyes again. Thank you, Robin. You have lighted my way. My inner child's journey with the bear became in the toy store. And we near the end of this story now. But maybe our journey has just begun. I brought Robin to bed and lay down beside her. Bear, Robin, <laughs> Lisette. <laughs> and I said to her, no matter how old you are, and she said, you always be a child. You have to say that at the end. Are there any children in the house? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>